setting up one line of type. We will now set up the name Howard. Take your self-centering type holder and slide it into the type holder stand like this, making sure the black pillar screw is facing up. Remove any of the line dividers that are in your type holder. Now pull out one of your letters and look at the sides. You will see that one side has a notch cut in it. When placing the letters into the type holder, make sure the notch faces up towards the black pillar screw. Start with the H, then the O, then the W, and so on. Now set up the word imprinting. You will need to use a spacer between words. Make sure all the notches are facing up. Once you have your name set up, turn one of the black handles and tighten the holder down like this. Insert the push bar like so and tighten the black screw on top. This will keep your line straight. Make sure both screws are snug. You can use the self-centering type holder for printing monograms and dies. Here is what you need to do to the type holder to accommodate these larger letters and dies. Turn the type holder over and remove these two screws. This will remove the pillar and pillar screw, allowing the larger letters or dies to fit into the type holder. Now drop in your monogram like this and turn the handle and it will clamp the letters in like a vise. Inserting the type holder into the machine. Hold the type holder by one of the black handles. Look at the left side of your machine and you will see what is called the jib lock. It has a black rubber tip. Push back on the jib lock as you are sliding the type holder into the machine. Push the type holder all the way in until it stops. There is a built-in stop so that the type holder is centered into the machine. Setting the temperature. How will you know what temperature to use for a particular foil? Look at the back of your color chart. The foil application guide tells you what the correct temperature setting is. Look at one of the rolls of foil. You'll see a white tape with a number and a letter next to the number. The letter corresponds with this chart. Here we have 25K foil. As you will see on the chart, the 25K should be at 275 degrees. On the right side of your machine, you will see a red knob with numbers to the right of it. This is your temperature control. Turn the red knob and set the correct temperature at this silver mark. Turn the knob until you get to the correct temperature, 275. It will take four to five minutes for the machine to reach the desired temperature. Choose the right attachment for the job. This is what we call the work table. The work table is used to align any large items like napkins, Christmas cards, ribbon, etc. Remember, the manual has diagrams for all of these setups for your review. Let's first demonstrate printing a napkin. We only need to use the Y-arm assembly for napkins. Take all of the other parts off of your work table. I suggest keeping a small box by your machine to store these parts so they don't get lost. Note that the Y-arm can go into any of the four corners of the work table. Choose the one that works best for you. Now put the large screw through one of the holes from the back of the table. Lay the Y-arm on the screw and tighten it down with the large black screw. It should look just like this. The easiest part is aligning the napkin. Because the type holder is always centered in your machine, all you have to do is put the point of your napkin on zero and bring the Y-arm to the edge of the napkin and tighten down. Now you will be centered from left to right on your napkin. Now install the work table. You will see two rails on the bottom of the work table. These slide on the base of the machine like this. To adjust the position for top to bottom, you just slide the work table like this. Notice the opening in the work table. This is for your cushion board. You received a dozen cardboard and one rubber cushion board with your machine. We suggest you try them both and see what works best for you. To install the cushion board, just slide it in the opening like so. You should never print without a cushion board in your work table. As a rule of thumb, the larger you imprint, the softer your cushion board should be. These boards are not permanent, so you need to turn them over or change them frequently to assure you get good, clean imprints. Once you install the work table, you are ready to install the foil. 
Always align your item before putting the foil on the machine so it is easier to see what you're doing. Installing the foil. Foil has a dull side and a shiny side. Install the foil on the front spool with the dull side facing you. Slide one of the discs inside the left side of the roll and the other inside the right end. Push firmly together and center on the front of the machine. Pull out 12 inches or so of foil and put your left finger here. Pull the foil around the machine on the right like this and fold over to a point. Push through the opening in the back of the machine while turning the hand feed knob on the right side of the machine. Your foil should appear out the back. If the foil is crooked, you can straighten the foil by lifting on the floater bar like this. Pulling the handle. Now comes the fun part, pulling the handle. Sit or stand in front of the machine. Put your hand on the handle like this and pull down. There are three important factors when imprinting. First is the heat, which is set thermostatically on the machine and will not change. The second is pressure, which is how hard you pull the handle down. Notice the little bit of pressure the handle is given when I press down. Third is the dwell time. This is the amount of time we hold the type on the item. A dwell of approximately one half second is all that is ever needed. Slide your napkin in like this. Pull the handle. And here is your imprint. Notice I only hold the handle down for approximately one half second. If you hold the handle down too long, you will not get a good, clean imprint. The most important factor is the pressure you give. Notice how I press down a bit once the type has made contact with the napkin. This is what we are looking for when applying the pressure. Don't be afraid to adjust the handle position to give you a bit more pressure and leverage. Adjusting the foil feed. Now let's check our foil feed to make sure we do not waste foil. The foil feed is how much foil the machine feeds each time you pull the handle. The objective here is to adjust the foil feed by turning one of these black knobs so you feed the amount needed for the size letters or die needed. Look at our first imprint and the spacing between imprints. Now by adjusting the foil feed, I can get these imprints to be very close together so you do not waste foil. Printing a Bible. When printing a Bible, we recommend using the Model 150 machine because it has a smaller base plate and allows the spine of the Bible to be out of the way of the type holder. Printing on Bibles requires the use of this gauge bar and also the cushion board provided with the gauge bar. You will see the gauge bar has two lips that align with the base of the machine. You slide the gauge bar on the machine like so. Now let me show you how to install the gauge bar with the cushion board. Hold the cushion board in your right hand and the gauge bar in your left hand. Slide the gauge bar on the machine, making sure you leave plenty of the cardboard cushion board hanging off the front of the machine. This will give you support for the Bible and also provide a place to clamp down the Bible. Here's how the gauge bar works. By sliding the bar back and forth, you determine how far up on the front cover of the Bible the imprint will be. By sliding the side guide left to right, you determine the location of the imprint from the right edge of the Bible. Now look inside the cover of the Bible and you will see a seam. You always want to make sure you print above the seam or you will not get a good smooth imprint. Now make a test print on a piece of paper and lay the paper on the cover of the Bible to see if it is in the proper location. To move the imprint up on the Bible, loosen the screw on the gauge bar and slide the gauge bar towards the back of the imprinter. To move the imprint farther from the edge of the Bible, loosen these two screws and slide the side guides more to the left. Notice how the location of the imprint has changed. Once you have the positions where you want them, open up the cover of your Bible and place it on the gauge bar like so. Clamp the front left of the Bible to the cushion board. This will assist you in holding the Bible in place while printing. Now pull the handle down and print without foil a couple of times. Notice the pressure I give the handle when printing. 
This will pre-tool the leather and flatten out any grain there may be in the cover. This is especially important when printing on grainy leather. Now lay a piece of foil on the cover and pull the handle again. You should use a good firm pull, but only hold the handle down for half a second. If you hold the hot type on the cover too long, you will get a blurry impression. If you did not get a good impression, you can print over the same area again. Just make sure you do not move the book. Guest book. For the guest book, we will use the same work table with the guide bar and side guide installed like this. To adjust the left to right position on the book, we will slide the side guide back and forth like this. To move the imprint farther up on the book, we will need to move the guide bar farther back on the work table to another set of holes. You can always loosen the work table and move forward or back for small adjustments when positioning the book. Always make a test print on a piece of paper first to check spelling and the print position on the book. Once you have the spelling correct and the position correct, we are ready to proceed. When printing onto books, do not pull the foil on the machine. First, make an imprint on the book once or twice without foil. What this does is flatten out the book or grain so you have a smooth area to print. Now lay a piece of foil over the book and print again. This will add the color. With books that have a lot of grain, you may have to print with the foil two or three times to get good coverage. Make sure you do not move the book between imprints. That's all there is to it. Two-line setup. When setting up two lines of type, you set the second line on top of the first line. The first step is to insert two or three line dividers. Notice how the first line is shorter than the line dividers. What you need to do now is take two spacers of the same size, put one on the left and one on the right. Now take two spacers of a smaller size and put one on the left and one on the right. It is important that you always put the smallest spacers next to the type so that the spacers do not fall between the lines. You must also make sure you space the line of type out to be longer than the line dividers. Now set the second line. Again, you take two of the same size spacers and put one on the left and one on the right until you get the second line close to the same length as the first line. See how the top line is still loose? It is very important that you use the spacers to get both lines the same length. Now you will use the small copper and brass shim spacers like this. Put one on the left and one on the right to get the second line the same length as the first. If you don't, your letters will fall out when you turn the type holder over. In closing, we hope you found the information in this training video useful in setting up your new Howard. We recommend watching the video as many times as necessary until you are comfortable.